So you was the Swift driver, right? Right. All right. All right. So you say we got about what twenty minutes? Yeah. That's that's cool. You could tell your story. That's cool for you. That's cool for you. Hey, right, hey. Right. If you could tell your story in twenty minutes, it, it works for me. <laughs> if you need, I if you, you if you need more time to tell your story, I, hey, I, I'm not gonna rush you, bro. That, that's that's what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna rush you. I got you. And I'm saying because you the one that got the story to tell, and uh, I appreciate you're it. Right. I, I appreciate it very, very much that you are oh, here sure, to, sure. to talk about it. CJ, North Carolina, right? North Carolina? That's what that say? Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina, yep. All right. CJ, Charlotte, North Carolina in the building. All what's right. Up, what's up? All right, all right, all right. What's going on, my guy? How you feel? Tired as hell like any other day. <laughs> I hear you. All right, man. So you know, we came together. You know, I, I get majority of my uh, content from TikTok. And I came across your video showing that you was in an accident. And from the video, it shows that Swift has one of those side cameras now that you can see the, the cars on the side of you now. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. actually bought those myself because I figured something like that was going to happen sooner or later because it's Swift and that's the company I started out with. So I actually, I went on here and did the same thing and um, I read the book and it didn't say nothing about we couldn't glue things. We just couldn't drill things or tamper with the wires. So I was able to manipulate it up there and my job and manager was like, you didn't break the rules so it was good with me. So I just I had it up there for a while for, for things just like that. And it and it came in handy. So let's start off with with the idea of, of you getting the camera and where you actually got the camera from. So let's start off with that. So what you got with Swift, you started driving with him and you just thought to yourself, instead of just getting a dash camera, you thought you just get an all around camera. So where did the idea come from and where did you get the camera from? I mean, the idea just came because, you know, Swift hired a lot of new people um, who never had CDOs before. I already had mine, but I never drove. I never drove a truck, but they hired a lot of people. So, you know, they got all the insurance fraud, the claims, you know, the drivers being new hitting things. And I just didn't, I knew everybody make mistakes, but I knew I knew how to drive. So I didn't want anybody getting no false claims against me making the, my MVR. You feel me? If if something happened on my MVR, I want to be the reason it happened, you know, because of me, not because they couldn't determine because somebody else fault, you know? So um, what I did was I started Googling cameras and I, Oh, this is a Chinese company called like Join Glow, and I went on Amazon and ordered them. And like I said, like you said, a dash cam wouldn't have been good enough for me because you know they have one, but it only records when it's triggered. So I went on Amazon and got they're called Join Glow. They got all different type of you know packages and cameras you can buy. The one I had got was like four hundred. Um, and it comes with four cameras, so, you know, I put two on the passenger side, one facing down the back way, like a video you guys saw, and one facing the um, blind spot side of the hood. I have one in the inside for the dash camera. Um, you know, this why I always have video for whatever happens. Um, and then I have one on the passenger, on the driver's side, facing down the length of the trailer. That's what's up, man. I always say get cameras like that for your own personal, because the company camera you you don't have immediate access to just in case you need it. So, but exactly. getting something like that is a good idea too. And companies are coming around to putting all around cameras on their trucks. Not not all of them, but a few of them. And it's just it's it's just a surprise that yours was outfitted like that because I thought Swift was coming around to doing that, but. You said that this is your camera setup. Oh yeah, I've never seen any trucks. But you couldn't drill or anything like that. So how did you actually get the the outside cameras mounted? Well, I got creative with it. So um, one of the cameras on the passenger side is zip tied to the bracket, and then the rest of them under the mirror, under the mirror housing. I went to Walmart and got like this little welding glue that could be removed. It's kind of like a cock, so to speak, but it's kind of like 
it gets clear and then it hardens up and turns yellow, kind of like that. And um, I took the mirror housing off, um, set them on there, you know, put the glue on there, set it on there, and overnight they dried. And they just, it's been about eight months and they, they never fallen off. They were never leaning anything. And so, and but then with the files of power go, I got the DC adapter from um, Amazon too when I ordered it. So my inverter is actually under my bunk. And since I don't plug anything under there at all, I just plug it up in there. So it's kind of just running all day. Um, until the batteries on the truck go there, unless I turn it off. Now, is this for the camera setup and for the for the DVR box? Is it is it internal memory or is it or you have to get a a SCSI disc the 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 go into it? Well, yes, you can you can get one of those, but I had like the regular OSD card I got. Um, mine record for like I think it's like a hundred hours. So I mean, by that time I've been on figure out what I needed to figure out. Hopefully, if something happens, <laughs> but that's about as much time I can get from it. You can put like a flash drive or um, a hard disk. But I just use like the regular. Like the SD card that would go on the camera, that's what I got. It was the cheapest one. Is it Wi-Fi? Are you able to, like, forward the video via Wi-Fi to yeah, your phone? Yeah, so um, I do have Wi-Fi on my truck, and um, it comes, like, with an app, and you can view the cameras on live from your phone, you know, as long as the Wi-Fi is still in the truck, or you could just... It comes with, like, a little screen, too, that you keep. I have mine in the back that way I can see what's going on when I'm in my sleeper. It comes with a little screen, I'll just record it, you know, what happens from there with your phone. But it does come with the app where you can download the video... Or if you alive, whenever you like, if you're not at the truck. Wi-Fi? Swift? Swift got Wi-Fi? <laughs> and a, and, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, I'm in school, so I have to. <laughs> I'm just BSing. I'm BSing, man. So now, fast forward to the incident. You you just happened to be on the side of the, of the road because you was broke down, or was you parked? Oh, no, I was actually in, this was a, what, um, a four lane road and I was actually in the left lane going straight the other two lanes are turning lanes I was in the lane and I was actually a light like 500 feet away from going to get my food so I was actually going to get my food then I was going to park and I was getting off of 285 onto Old National Highway and that light was red and I was just sitting there and you know, next thing I know he slammed right into me Lord at mercy 285 I, and I'm going to continue to knock on wood because I, I drive through Atlanta all uh -huh. the time because well, Atlanta Georgia what? is my route on my way to Florida so I'm going to uh -huh. Continue to knock on wood, but it never fails that every yeah, same here. every time I I I drive on 285, I I see an accident all the time, and it it never fails. Yeah, it, it, it's terrible, man. Nobody down here can drive at all. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Nobody can drive down here. It's crazy. And I, I you come down here every almost every day, and I do too. I go from um here to Virginia or here to Raleigh and back because I'm on the dedicated Costco run. So I go from here to Virginia or here to Raleigh and, you know, back and forth all week long until I go home to Charlotte for the weekend. All right. So you sitting there at the red light, minding your business, probably just listening and vibing and everything. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, just bam. So take us back to what happened. Yeah, like you said, I was just sitting there and, um, you know, the light had turned to green, but that next light was red. Um, Next thing I know. He slammed right into me. I honestly didn't realize it was from that side. I didn't know if somebody ran to the back or the side. I didn't comprehend it at first until I got out. And I actually looked to the back and nobody was behind me. So I went around the other side. I saw him. And the first thing that came to my mind was, take a picture. Go make sure the video was, you know, captured on the cameras. And, and that's what I did. Um, me personally, I don't really have, like, sympathy for people who do, like, stupid stuff. So it's hard for me to be like, oh, dang, are you all right? Because just, that's just not in me. It's just the way I am. Um, he looked as fine to me because he was getting out the car by the time I got out the truck. And yeah, like I said, he just ran right into the side of me. I looked back and I actually posted the video in the Facebook group um, called Black Truckers Official. And it, was, it wasn't until then until one of them pointed out. Well, a lot of them pointed out that his car, like the whole front of his headlight, that whole side of the car was already smashed prior to him hitting me. And I didn't even notice that at first. I actually never noticed it until after that whole situation. Like that quiet as it kept did not matter because it was his fault. You see what I'm saying? So his his whole front end could have been jacked up, but he ran into you. You didn't run into him. So I I, right. th I think somewhere in, the, if I'm not mistaken, in the comment session, I think there was a lot of back and forth about who was at fault. And I didn't you come back and and relay the fact that the guy that did run into you tried to make it your fault. 
How what what happened with that, and how did you able to clarify the fact that it wasn't? Yeah, so um, I you know like I said, I knew I didn't do nothing. I was just, I was just sitting there. Um, and when the officer came, I was the first one talking to him. Um, and he wouldn't really tell us what the he wouldn't tell me his name. He wouldn't tell him my name. He wouldn't say nothing about the insurance. All he was saying that it'd be on the police report. It'd be on the police report. Like he wasn't really communicating. But all he said was, um, if you didn't have the video, I wouldn't be able to determine the fault. Um, and it wasn't until after I got the police report where I see where he told the officer that I ran into him. Like I said, the officer wouldn't even relay. He wouldn't relay no messages or nothing to either of us. I had to find it out on the police report. Wow. So let's let's park this for a minute before I before I commentate on the guy. So the cop says he couldn't determine who was at fault. Like, bro, you how could you that's, not if you had a standstill? That's what I'm saying. When he first pulled up, you know, I was the first one out the truck and I saw him coming. I walked up to him. I showed him asked me what happened. I showed him the video. He was like, good thing you had that because if you didn't, I wouldn't have been able to determine the fault. And I'm like, you don't see how that dude is in my lane and I'm in my lane. And like the vehicles are going towards the left. He hit me, you know, like the fuel tank even busted over. I'm like, the fuel starts in my lane, but I couldn't comprehend how he wouldn't have comprehended that. But you know how it is. So let me get this straight. You, you coming up to the accident already ready to to make it the truck driver's fault. Am I'm am I hearing right. that? Yeah, that's exactly what it seemed like. Wow. That's exactly what it seemed like. Wow. If you didn't have the footage, I couldn't determine who was at fault. And you and Stevie Wonder could see who was at fault, bro. So simple. Even a blind man could see it. <laughs> They just, they don't care. Like, he didn't even, he didn't even care enough to, you know, do a 360 around the truck, around the scene. You know, he basically was just looking over from the side, from behind. He didn't do, like, a 360 or nothing. I'm like, I mean, all right, it is what it is, you know. I got the video, so I know I'm covered. But, you know, damn, you could do a little bit more. Because what if I did? You know, this is my life. Yeah, what if you didn't? And even exactly. if it wasn't, it's just a simple fact. Exactly. What if you didn't have the footage? Then what? You, you He was going to make it. Oh, well, right. well we're just going to write up this report and we're just going we, we to make it your fault. Like, really? Wow. All right. That's, so, the way, that's the way it was seemed like. So let me tip on the guy. So the guy got out of the car while you and the officer was conversing. He didn't offer you anything. He didn't come up to you and say, here's my insurance. Here's this. Here's that. And nothing like that. He uh, just kept to himself until the officer went over there to talk to him. Correct. He didn't knock on the door. He didn't say nothing to me. Even when I got out the truck originally to take the picture right when it happened, um, he was getting out. He looked me in my face. He got his dog. And he just walked to the side. He didn't say anything to me. You okay? I'm sorry. No, none of that. It wasn't until a while later when he just wanted to make a scene um, asking me, yeah, telling the officer I need his information, you know, just getting all loud. You know how they do for no reason right. when they're in the wrong. Right. Um, and that's, but that's actually as much as I heard out of his mouth. Wow. So without knowing the back and forth of the officer and him, you, you actually found out from the police report that he actually said that, you was in fault. Like, what was said according to him how he saw the accident? Um, I believe it said that driver one indicated that driver two merged into his lane and struck him, but dash cam video confirms that driver one merged into driver's two lane. I believe that's what it said verbatim. So I would have never known what he said because the officer wouldn't tell me. He just kept saying it to be on the police support. Well, like, I, I, I guess to be fair, because I'm all, I've been in uh -huh. accidents myself. And I, with lawyers that's that's potentially going to get involved, it's always best not to say anything. You know what I'm saying? And it's always, right. it's not even, it's it's to the point now, people don't even get out just to see if you're all right, because they can use that little bit of info, that uh -huh. just, just those few words. Are you okay? They can find some way to use that. So I, I guess it's safe to say that a lot of drivers, especially drivers that get in incidents with commercial vehicles, it's always best for them not right. to say nothing at all. And it's always best for you as well. But you being a truck right. driver, your instincts is going to be like, well, let me go ahead and make sure that the driver's all right or whatever the case, whoever fault it is. But we still... Our instincts is to make sure that that person is all right. And then after we make sure that person is all right, then we'll just go back to being, we'll wait till the officer get here and we'll give our testimony of what happened. Because if right. y'all trying to, if y'all trying to converse and 
you trying to be all easy and all like that or coming out saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, we live in a digital age. Everybody is recording, even if you don't even exactly. think they are. He could have had his phone on him, could have easily had it recording and then get out of the truck, get out of his car and try to catch what you say or anything like that. So it's just a matter of right, and you was right against you. Right, it's just a matter of being careful of what you're doing in any situation, man. All right, so now that's that's been cleared up. What does Swift have to say about it? Because I'm I'm thinking you have to let your safety people know about it. And what was what was their assumption of? of dealing with you in that situation? Did they put you on a safety hold? What did what did they do? Oh, no. Nah, well, when it happened, um, you know, once the paramedics and everything got there, um, we got, like, you know, we got, like, the protocol we call and everything, and I called the corporate office, um, told them what happened, told them I had the video, and I actually never heard anything else about it. They told me, they asked, they sent me home. My driver manager sent me home for a couple of days out of courtesy because I got an accident. But um, I, I haven't heard anything else about it. I wasn't put on leave. I actually could have stayed, you know, stayed at work if I wanted to. Um, but I haven't heard anything about it. They just told me if it, when the insurance just to call you, if you could give them the information, if you um, feel like you need to file a claim um, with the company, you can go ahead and do it. And that's that's about it. I haven't heard anything else about it actually. Did they have to come and get the truck, or was you able to drive the truck? Oh yeah, um, he hit the um, gas tank on the left side, the fuel tank on the um, right side, in which bursted it open. So that's where all of that mess came from. So they did end up calling the hazmat company out there to, to suck all the fuel out of both tanks, and I had to be towed to the terminal room back in Decatur. So I was over there by the airport. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I was lucky enough to be that close. Now, once you got back to the terminal, you took you a couple of days off. They got you in the new truck. What no. did? They, they, or, yeah, they got or, me in the loaner truck. They got you in the loaner truck. So they, so yeah, they still haven't even fixed my truck. So the idea is to fix your truck and not put you in the new truck. Right. Yeah, to fix that one. Uh, I know my job manager mentioned to me if she saw a new KW go through our terminal that she would ask me if I wanted it. But I mean, I don't want it. So yeah, they just going to fix that when when they done fixing it, they'll let me know, and um, I'll just go back to Atlanta and. Swap the trucks back out. All right, all right, all right, all right. CG, hey. well, again, man, I, I appreciate you coming on here telling the story, man. And I'm glad everything turned oh, no out problem. all right. Oh, just to add on, I did get a DOT inspection after about two hours. <laughs> they did come out there and inspect me. Wow. Are you, well, yep. I guess it's protocol, I guess. Did they Did they come out there and do a, a, a drug test on you too or no? Oh, no, they didn't do that. Did, I never had to do one. Did you? So you didn't have to. You didn't have to take a drug test or anything like that. No. All right. Well, be ready. I don't for know that if somebody random. dropped the ball and skipped the step, but <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring that. Yeah, I'm be, figuring that it, it's coming around. Yeah, be ready for that random. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, I'm figuring it's coming. You know, but I don't know if nobody ever said they dropped the ball. When they realize it, I'm pretty sure I hear about it. All right, man. So after all of this, man, what, what would be your moral of the story, man? I'm again. I'm. I'm. Damn glad that you're all right. I'm I'm glad everything worked into your favor. But what, what's your takeaway from all of this before we get on up out of here? Uh, you could be doing your job, do everything right every day, and the whole world when you're a truck driver, the whole world still gonna be against you. The DOT officer, the police officer, the insurance people, they all gonna be against you. You see, I ain't even do nothing. And everybody still wanted to point the finger at me. I still the one had to quote unquote suffer the consequences. You see, of being blamed, you know, but. You know, I guess it is how it is. Exactly. 